Sony's just announced Vegas 80C. And there's a couple of new features in this new build that you might not immediately recognize. So let's take a look at what's been put into 80C that's going to improve or at least maybe change your workflow. Up in the trimmer, we can see that we now have three new buttons. And let's just drag the trimmer down here so you can see a little better. So there are three new buttons up in the top of the trimmer. The first one is show video monitor. The second one is trimmer on external monitor. And the third one is to show video frames. So we've got some different choices that we can get involved with here in the, uh, the monitor. Basically what this does is it turns the trimmer into a source window when we click on show video monitor. So we now have a source window in our video monitor and you'll notice down here that um, what we've got shown selected is only audio and the video up above. So when we click on the show video frames, that's now going to show us our old trimmer view plus the view that we've got in the trimmer window. If you've got a fast computer, this is a great option, but bear in mind, now Vegas is having to draw those video frames two different times. So if you're working on a slower machine or if you just simply want optimal performance, I recommend that you keep the show video frames turned off. So let's turn that show video frames back off. And we can now view this also on an external monitor and it goes out over our 1394 or whatever our external monitor setup is at our options window. Let's drag this back up to its, its docking window here. So we've got these three tools here that we can work with and, and nothing has changed. Show video monitor is new, trimmer on external monitor is new, and show video frames is new. But there are a couple of other things that are also new here. If we do click on show video frames, let's just uh, shrink this down just a little bit here. If we've got the video only select or audio only selected, you'll notice in this lower corner here we have an audio only indicator. This is telling this little gray bar here is telling us that we have audio only indicated. If we have video only selected, it's going to show us here that we've got a video frame selected. You can see that indicated right here. So this is telling us that it's video only selected rather than video and audio. We'll tab down to audio only, and I'm just pressing the tab key. You can see our selection change. Now we've got both audio and video selected, so nothing is showing up in the indicator window here. And then again, we'll click, and again, we've got just video frames selected there. So we'll turn that show video frames off. And right now, it's telling us that we have video only selected, even though we're not looking at the video frames. Press the tab key again. Now we're seeing audio only selected, and you can also see this in the right-hand corner of the frame. And click one more time on the tab key, and now it's audio and video. Now the next thing that you'll note is that we have a couple more buttons down here. We have a fit to fill button and our standard add media up to cursor and, and uh, from cursor. Then we have a new button here which is enable timeline overwrite. Let's go to our explorer for just a second and we'll grab a piece of uh, ABCHD media and drop that down on the timeline. Great. Now we're going to grab uh, one other clip here and do the same thing with it. And I'm trimming it here on the on the timeline for a reason. Okay, so now we've got a couple of pieces here. We'll just double click in, in the middle there where we've got nothing, and we'll go back to our trimmer. We can place our cursor on any given frame in the trimmer here where, we, where we'd like it to insert, and we click the A key, and it automatically adds, so it fits that space right there. And that's a normal behavior. It's one that we've always had in Vegas. So let's undo that. And the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to create a selection here on the, the, in the trimmer. Now I've got a selection here. We can see we've got 31 seconds selected, yet down here we've got 58 seconds selected. I'm going to select the Fit to Fill button, and it drops that, that clip immediately into the timeline as a new event. But notice that the speed of that clip has been changed. Let's go to Properties, and look, it's playing back at half speed. This is because we told Vegas that we wanted to do a fit to fill. So if we've got an area that's selected on the timeline and an area that's selected in the trimmer and the two times don't match up, then Vegas is either going to speed up the clip or slow down the clip so that it fits in as a new event on the timeline to fit to fill, just like the name implies. Let's move on a little farther. So we'll take this uh, fit to fill back out here since we've seen how that works. Okay. We'll butt these two clips up next to each other, and let's put our cursor, say, right here in this particular shot, and let's identify a place right here on the timeline that we want to work with in our trimmer. Let's just find a 
Kind of a cool shot there. There we go. We've got a selection here of 11 seconds on the timeline. I actually want to overwrite this particular clip right here in that segment. So let's enable our timeline overwrite and place our cursor on the timeline where we'd like the new clip to come in. Let's press the add media from cursor. And now it has split out the old section and dropped in the new section to where we wanted that to go. And you'll notice it doesn't change the length of our timeline at all. It's a, a standard overwrite mode. Overwrite is a great way of writing something into an existing track. If you're coming from the world of Avid or Final Cut, you might appreciate this. If you're coming from the older Vegas world, you might not care. But it is a nice feature that allows Vegas to fit in a little bit more nicely into that broadcast or that ENG niche for people that are used to the overwrite or perhaps you'd call it the bovarite, the, the uh, shift B edit that you're familiar with coming from the Avid world. This is exactly the same thing. So the next thing that we've got here is we've got a mix of AVCHD and HDV on the timeline uh, happening together. Now let's just play these back. I'll play this at the very start here. You'll notice our frame rate is pretty bad. That's because Vegas is down converting that AVCHD on the fly to DV. So make sure you've got your project property set up correctly. Now this is a little bit of an odd situation because I have footage from the CX-12 and from the CX-7. In other words, some of it's 1440-1080 and some of it's 1920-1080. So let's set this up for 1920-1080. And you can see we've got rock solid playback speed. In other words, the application has been optimized significantly for AVCHD, but you need to be sure that your project properties are set up correctly. And if you are mixing AVCHD or HDV or XDCAM with various sources, I recommend that you go with the largest file size source. In other words, if you've got 1920 1080 media and you've got 1440 1080 media, I recommend that you put it in 1920 1080 uh, project settings and then just preview at auto preview or preview mode in the auto setting and that'll set you up. Yeah.